my company won't pay for training, any advice. Uh, this is near and dear to my heart because I'm a trainer. Um, I'm, I'm a big advocate. Let's, you know what, I'm not gonna go into a big diatribe on this one. Let's just keep it simple. If, like I always say, how you're being treated is how you're being perceived. So my thing is this, if you've got people who are fighting you, um, it's usually HR, <laughs> who will come up with every excuse not to pay for your um, training or supplement it in some way or even allow you to go Dutch, um, you really need to rethink about you know, the place where you're working. Because I was always under the impression that if I was joining a company, my boss was low key sort of responsible, if you will, uh, for making me a better executive or making me or turning me into an executive. So this is this job is not necessarily a, what would you call it, uh, like a stepping stone. But in essence, it kind of is. I mean, we fell into this role of executive assistant, most of us. And I honestly thought, maybe in my idealistic mind, we wanted to be executive assistants, absorb all of this information, see how business works, really learn the best of from our executives. And hopefully by proving that we, you know, we had that desire and that passion and we were producing at a, a level that was increasingly better over the years, um, they would then help us become, you know, a, a, an executive of, of some sort, a director or, a, or even a VP or even a, like a, C, a COO or a CAO or whatever they call it. Um, um, uh, the highest levels of administrative in in the field now and I think we somehow got derailed because we we kind of accepted the job we're expecting to get those those sort of pushes along you know along the tracks and up the hill by our executives but our executives um, are busy I mean that's really really what it comes down to they're busy and they're unconcerned with anything but the business so that that's unfortunately left executive assistants to um, handle their own professional development I don't see anything wrong with that to be honest with you so I like to work for companies and I only work for companies that provide uh, an education budget or continuing education budget and I use it I use every last penny of it um, and I sometimes I go over that and I will pay for it myself because Again, this is my brand. I'm approaching my role as as its own sort of steam engine. You know, I'm trying to learn something new every single day that I can use in you know further applications down the line. And if I feel stale, that's my fault. It has nothing to do with my company. If my company doesn't pay for my continuing education, I pay for it for myself. It's that simple. But I also give side eye to the company that won't pay for it because it's like, okay, well, clearly you don't think I'm worthy of it. I know you've got budget and I know you were happy to write a $25,000 check to get some rando, you know, that has never worked here before to come in and, and fill a seat and who has no skin in the game. Um, yet you can't give me, you know, 1500 bucks a year to continue growing in this position and continuing basically to help you and the company grow interesting so um my advice is if your company won't pay for it pay for it yourself and if you're still not growing a position um because if you're continuing to grow and educate yourself yet your position is staying the same quit simple as that um you've 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 hit officially your glass ceiling and it's time to move on um, don't never stay somewhere where you're getting this, you know, what's the point? Um, if you have executives that don't have your back and executives that don't want to see you grow and want you to just calendar and be a convenience for them. Okay. You can do that for now, but I would say you're doing yourself a disservice if you continue to stay in that position because, um, like I said, the position is changing and I just answered the question in five years, it's going to be a different position and you will be termed out because, you know, the edict will roll down from, from, uh, probably the C-suite saying, Hey, you guys, uh, we need to eliminate five positions. So we're starting with EAs and do your own goddamn calendar management, you know, do your own travel call here. Here's a number call and book your own travel, you know, and they will because guess what? They want to keep their jobs as well. So, um, back again, um, if your company won't pay for your your continuing education, pay for it yourself and then leave and go find a better job and someone who will pay for it. How about that? Um, that's gonna be unpopular. <laughs> oh well. Um, and last question. Um, I hear people talk about their why all the time. Um, I'm curious, what's yours? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I'd say my why is Changing 
again, I, I think I've probably said this a million times, but just changing the perception of this role and changing the perception that people have about this role. Um, and I'd also say empowering executive assistants to have a voice and in, in some way give them permission to to kind of stamp their feet a little bit and and again, advocate for themselves. I think we are still incredibly, um, we're allowing this role to be incredibly hierarchical. Um, we're allowing executives to basically hand us a bunch of tasks instead of pushing back and saying, you know what, I'm gonna hand that off to AI or I need help. Uh, I would love someone under me, which will help me grow as a manager, um, whom I can give these tasks to, someone junior who can, I can also help you know, bring up to a level as an executive assistant, but I wanna do more strategic work for you. I wanna look at your objectives and I wanna align my objectives to those. I wanna be able to take things off of your plate. I wanna be able to be a proxy in meetings for you so that you can go and actually build this company and I can take you know more of a strategic role um, and have people sort of not report to me necessarily, but at least funnel information through me that I can give you in nice bite-sized pieces. Manage the minutia and then give to you in bite-sized pieces. If you have questions, then I can go back down the chain. That frees up your time, that allows me to grow in position, that allows me to manage someone and help them grow into or flourish in, in position and also grow into an executive assistant um, who will eventually be my backfill because I'm hoping that you will promote me at some point to another position. So, you know, I'd say that's my why. I think what I want to get us there. I want executives around the world to understand not just our power and our influence, I mean, I'm, you know what, whatever, but understand that we, we're we different now. We're not just coffee getters. We're not just people who, you know, book stuff and clean conference rooms and, you know, order really cool lunches and, you know, do events that are, you know, cheesy and whatever. You know, I, we, we really are strategic beings and beasts. And we're born with that. We're born with this beautiful thing called empathy, but we're also born with the ability to sort of see situations and figure out the best way to, to navigate them. And we're never ever really credited with that. We're never, we never really have those those sort of soft skills and those those sort of get you gotchas um, exploited by our executives because they have somehow I don't know what book they're teaching it in but they have their own sort of idea of what we do and our capabilities and we don't advocate on our behalves of the capabilities and abilities that we have so there's a chasm there that I think needs to be that needs to be addressed and and, and needs to be breached um, and a lot of that is on us and that's that's really what why I do what I do. I want us to get there. I want us to be able to to walk in and 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 you know command the type of respect that I think we deserve and and really be that true sort of strategic business partner um, that I think executives need and are either too afraid to ask or you know too. Um, uninformed to ask. I think that's really what it comes down to. I don't think it's ego. I think it's, they're just, they just don't know and we don't advocate. I mean, they look at our resume the very first day and it's the last time they see the resume. Um, I make a habit of showing my executive anytime I work for one, my resume at least once every six months. It's like, you realize I'm also a real estate agent, right? You realize um, I'm a personal trainer and you're getting fat and all you have to do is ask me and I will happily you know, devise a, a training um, schedule for you and a diet. Like why are, why are we looking for all these keto, you know, freaking you know, meal planning services and all that other stuff. You know, this stuff, this is what I'm talking about. We, we do so much more than, than coffee getting and, and uh, travel planning and, and calendar coordination. We have all of these other things that we do just because that's what makes us unicorns. That's what makes us special. And that's, that's where a lot of our you know, um, extracurricular activity and focus lies. It's, it's growing and being more well-rounded as people and also as professionals. But again, um, unless we advocate and tell people you know, and, and manage our brand and let them know, hey, I'm more than just that girl you think is, you know, knocking your calendar out. I'm, you know, I'm a beast. I've got a freaking master's. I, you know, I, I have expertise in so many other areas that could be beneficial to you and this company. Hear me. And I think, um, so I think that's really, that's really my why. That's why I do this. It's, it's, it's again to, to 
close that chasm, to close that that uh, that sort of um, lack of information, um, lack of authoritative, you know, self promotion loop <laughs> that I think we both suffer from. So there you go. That was a long one. Sorry. Um, I'll probably break this up into several ones uh, or several questions. Um, but uh, I'm. Um, I'm excited. I think uh, the year is off to a great start. I've got so many more classes uh, on the way. I've got a book that's about to be out, which I'm really excited about. This, it, I, I think this might be a good one. Um, I'll say that, that's just me. Obviously I wrote it, so I'm, I'm gonna think it's the world's greatest thing. But uh, I tell it like it is, and it's not about necessarily the executive assistant role. It's about business and how I see it. That's why I call it as I see it. And it's it's telling the truth. After 26 years, I've seen it all. I've gone through two dot coms quite successfully. Um, um, I've had ridden the, the waves, highs and lows, all of that. And I I've seen what's wrong in businesses. Um, I'm no business analyst or expert, but I'm just telling you from from the, the perspective of a 26 year black gay male assistant um, who happened to kind of be successful in my own right and and rock some of the you know, some of the top C-suites on the planet. So there you go. Um, it'll be out, I was looking at end of March, we're probably close to early April because I still have to <laughs> record the audiobook version. Um, but I'm trying to do that as quickly as possible so I can finally get this thing off my back. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me in the comments or um, shoot me a DM. I love DMs, I love answering questions. Um, so thank you all and I will catch you uh, on the next five questions.